Leo, how are you? My name is Lauren B. Welcome to the Untitled Tarot. So today I've laid out your spread with the Divine Animal Oracle deck, which is new in my collection, um, and the Elemental Oracle mixed together. Your reading is very complex today. I'm not going to mince words about it. And there's a lot of this juxtaposition, a lot of contrast happening with two different things very close in proximity to one another. Overall, when I sort of look on top of this spread. It's got a lot of this wheel of fortune energy. I know when we look at the wheel of fortune, we're looking at luck and abundance and you know, but the wheel of fortune is an incredibly seasonal energy. It's a seasonal card, right? It's sort of like in Game of Thrones when Daenerys says, you know, one house is on top and then the next house is on top. And there's sort of this, el this element of like randomness to it. Why does lightning strike in one place, but not another? Why does misfortune fall one and not the neighbor? Does that make sense? So there is an element of this randomness that is definitely a bit frustrating. And it does seem like you've been going through a bit of a rough patch trying to sort of exhaust your options figuring out how to kind of master the art of birth here at the end of your reading towards the end i do feel like we have found some type of solution or at the very least a technique that seems like it would be beneficial for you to play around with but we have to get there first and so so much of this reading is like how do we get there right how do we make our way through these complexities in a way where we're not kind of going crazy so the first two cards we're starting off with is electricity and then this clarity mountain card. Again, two energies that are very close to one another, but are extremely different. This feels like sort of what your experience now is, Leo. Everything is sort of frozen over. There isn't a lot of growth happening here. You may even be struggling through like exhaustion and fatigue. There is this energy of I just I submit to defeat because I'm so tired of trying to make this snow melt and I don't know what to do. So I'm just going to kind of lay here and hopefully just something will change. Now, on the other side of that, energetically, it does feel like you are receiving like these huge energy upgrades. It's almost like if you were to sit even in your most exhausted self, if you were to meditate and tap into your highest self, it's full and it's light and it's vibrant and it's full of energy, but it's just not reflecting in your body. It's not reflecting in the environment around you, right? And there is kind of the frustration of why can't this energy that I know I possess carry over into my physical world. I also wonder if your dreams have been a little bit crazy because a lot of this energy may be integrating or working its way through while you're sleeping. You have this freedom card coming up next, this horse, which feels a bit like a portal energy. Happy birthday, by the way, Leo. Happy birthday. Now we have, this is kind of where I'm getting the idea of like, maybe there's a lot of stuff kind of breaking through in your dreams. Perhaps with like the 8-8 portal, there is an opening that is about to present itself for you to sort of move through. You have hair cycles coming up next. So my hands are not big enough for this. So just hold for production. So again, it's sort of this crazy contrast. Oh, Lord, Lord be with me now. See how it's it's movement and then it's sort of this stagnation. It's the stillness and then there's a lot of movement with this horse and then there's more stillness with this hair. So in that, Leo, it does feel like your process up until this point has been very stop and go. Let's do it. It's like the army. It's like hurry up and then wait. There's a lot of this stop and go type of energy. When I look at this hair, one, this is one of the most beautiful cards I have ever seen in my life. It just makes my little Celtic heart happy. But it's almost as if when you tap in to your most idealized version of self or like how you want things to be or who you know you can be, it looks a lot like this hair card. It's healthy. It's vibrant. Um, something that sticks out is all of these little rabbits. You would think that these rabbits would kind of be scurried around eating the grass, right? Like kind of where the resources are, but they're not. They're actually staring and looking up at her as if she is where the resources come from. So part of this, I think, is the frustration of not wanting to be dependent on anyone or anything if you don't have to be. Like you want to be able to alchemize or create or manifest like the resources that you need 
independently with these rabbits kind of staring up at you it also gives me this impression that there might be a lot of people that come to you leo for advice for direction for support it's this feeling of like responsibility that you have for other people or other people holding you in a high enough regard to kind of seek you out for sustenance in a way but there is this frustration of i don't I don't have it. I don't have it for them. I don't have the juice. I don't have the plants. I can't make this place fertile for me, but it also means that I can't really make it fertile for them either. And I think that's adding to the pressure and the frustration. And I think it is adding into this idea of sort of uh, submitting to defeat in a way. Another thing that I'm noticing is this also kind of feels like the trajectory of the journey that you've been on likely for a long time um because again going back to this electricity card when you would start a new phase or when you start a new project you would almost assume that you'd kind of start on a lower level and you'd slowly work your way up i'm wondering if what happened for you is that when you put that seed in the ground or you started that project or you got on that path there was this big like explosion of energy things came to you so quickly you were feeling so vibrant it was almost like too good to be true i actually can't believe this is working out as well as it is i must be on the right path i must be in divine alignment this is amazing and then all of a sudden it just kind of plateaus it just sort of stops and then with this horse energy it's like through your own resilience through your own grit through your hard work it's kind of like you bust through some kind of barrier, but it's still all white. It's still all snowy. It's like you're just kind of running in place is a little bit of how it feels. It feels to me like when you are kind of looking back over your journey, there's a part of you now that is not even trying to recapture this electricity card. I don't even need it to be as big and as vibrant and as miraculous as what happened in the beginning of my journey. At this point, I would just settle for some stability. I would just settle for things being even keel, things being a little bit more consistent. I don't even need, this was great. This was great. I don't know why it came in and then it seemed to leave, but this was great. I'm not, I'm not even asking for this. Can we just stabilize what's going on here? Now, you have this jackal you have truth coming up next so one it feels like when you look at this hair card this version of yourself sort of your life in full form in a way um it feels like that is the truth for you that is who you are um and again there is frustration because it's like it feels like who i am is not translating into the outside world this is anubis anubis is one of the gods of the underworld and so there is also a message here about the fact that, Leo, you may have perceived the last few months or perhaps even years for yourself as being in a very long plateau or in a very prolonged gestation period. But it's coming through a little bit like you might have been actually in a very prolonged dark night of the soul without actually realizing it. It's almost like it was, it was worse than you expected, right? You're just like, I just can't get over this hump. And they're like, you're dying. Like you're in a dark night of the soul forever, just wandering through the valleys, right? Um, so there is something about that because you might be gaslighting yourself and going, oh, maybe it's not as bad as I thought, or oh, maybe I'm just, I'm being entitled, or maybe I'm just being impatient. Like there is sort of that energy. And I also think that may also be what's exhausting you mentally and emotionally right now. There is a message here of going, no, it's it was absolutely as difficult and as bad as you perceived it to be. Probably more than you perceived it to be um, if you stopped gaslighting yourself out of the reality of the actual experience that you've had. Now, with Anubis being a god of the underworld, there is something here about the soil. And I think it's meant to be kind of like a comforting message that Leo... Sometimes it's not entirely about what's happening on the surface. It's about the quality of the soil underneath. And so the soil that you have established for yourself, it feels like good soil here. And there's also something here about the fact that a lot can happen in the same space. That in one space, we can have winter, we can also have spring, that we can have summer, right? And so... 
it feels like it's meant to be again a message of hope and encouragement that just like the wheel of fortune like seasons do change even if you've been in a dark night even if you've been in a long winter that sooner or later the seasons will change in the same place something that really sticks out to me on this jackal card is the ears on these animals they're so big and they're so pointed so you also may be getting a lot of messages right now about pay attention listen be aware of your surroundings there's a message coming in for you like there is a lot of this you being aware which is difficult if you are kind of tired and you are sort of feeling down and out and just feeling like again admitting to defeat I just can't make this work really no matter what I'm doing they're like pay attention pay attention and I feel you're like I've been paying attention <laughs> like your energy starts to get like a little bit sassy in there but <sighs> this desert card is coming up next and it's coming out underneath this electricity energy. So it seems like part of what's happening right now, as I said, is that you are kind of being blasted with a lot of spiritual energy at this point in your life. It's not reflecting in your external life, but you probably likely can feel it because it feels like it's sort of draining. What I always say is like really high energy, really intense spiritual frequencies, they're not built for your physical body. So even if they're good for you, when they enter your vessel, they act like a virus. So your body and your energy kind of goes into like a little bit of a lull. It goes into a gestation because it has to integrate. It's like kind of getting like a vaccine, right? It's like you need like a little bit of, you know, that, that poison or that virus and it kind of affects your body and makes you kind of lethargic but your body sort of um, integrates it into your system, right? So there is like a bit of that happening. It may feel like this death. It may feel like a like an ego transformation. It may feel like this huge detox in a way. But there is something, and this feels very much like Anubis is sort of saying, you have to sit in this desert for a moment. There's sort of steps that it seems like you have to follow. You have to sort of sit in this desert. You have to put yourself right in front of the sun because that is going to be the thing right see even this right over here that's gonna melt that's gonna melt the environment there is also something here I'm trying to articulate it properly you have to be in the environment while it's melting which means that you too have to get blasted with this sun energy. It's not like you can like step into another season or step into another room while your physical life defrosts and then you can enter back into it when everything's peachy keen. It's like you have to stay there and hold space for it. Now, the thing that's interesting to me here is like this card, even though it's sort of very solitary, right? It's kind of desolate in a way. It looks like really happy and it looks really positive. So when I first pulled the card, there was sort of this message of you have to stay in this environment while this is happening. And it's almost this message of like, and you have to have a smile on your face when you're doing it. It's like you kind of have to be happy and grateful while you're there. And it, that message didn't sit right in my spirit. And maybe that's just me and my own attitude problem. I don't know. But the more I looked at this desert card, I actually realized that, you know, we can't actually see her face. Maybe she's not staring into the sun, like blissful and joyful. Like maybe she's crying. Or maybe she has a scowl on her face. Like maybe she's not happy sitting here, but we can't tell because we can't see her face. Which gives me the impression, Leo, that people may be looking at you at this point and kind of seeing all of this sunlight and going, wow, like Leo must be so happy. Look, and Leo's just sort of off on their own. Like, look how content they are. Look how still they are just in their own energy. But they can't really see your real face. They can't see how like difficult this actually is for you or how much you've perhaps been struggling and how this energy that maybe they're like wow is not even remotely close to the energy that you are trying to sit in right and so there also is kind of a feeling of disappointment there like people see me in so much of a better position than like I am actually in they perceive me as being much more light and joyful when it feels like I'm sort of being that's what it is Anubis is one of the gods of the underworld, kind of carries people to the dead, but he also um, oversees the embalming process. So 
it's sort of this feeling of they don't know that I'm kind of being gutted out through this. It looks so nice and shiny to them, but they don't know. It feels like everything is being pulled out from me, not just my environment, but out from me as a person. Now, you have this peace card, gorilla, right? So it's like you have to find some way to stay in this environment while being blasted with the sun, even if other people think you're having a great time and you're not. And you have to find a way to be at peace with this part of the process because it is a part of the process. It is a step. And if you actually notice, he has a, a helmet or a mask right here that he's taking off of him. And so... You're going from a person to an animal. And so there is something about kind of soothing the, the beast within. Um, so that way they can sit here in this energy as well. What really sticks out to me is this gorilla. And if you notice, we can't see either of their faces. So again, this is a very like private behind the scenes process that you're going through. When we're looking at this gorilla, he's looking over at this earth. And so... There's something here that like it feels like you're noticing like how complicated it should be. I have to again this reading's kind of complex, so I want to make sure I'm articulating it properly. It's sort of like you look at the earth and you go, wow, like as the earth turns, it has its orbits and then the water and then the earth. Like it feels very simple. But when you look at the earth, when you look at your life, when you look at what it is you're trying to actually do you recognize that it's like a deeply complex process here. This is like a variety of different ecosystems having to live in harmony with one another. The sun card comes up next, which I thought was kind of wild because it feels like these are the others. These are the other people. And it feels like you both are looking at the same thing, but you're seeing it in totally different ways. Like you're looking at your path or the world or your life and you are seeing this incredibly complex puzzle of balancing ecosystems and orbits but other people look for look at it and they only see the sun does that are these both four no that's six and they're seeing the sun they're seeing like this big burst of energy of power and you are actually noticing it's almost like big picture like power and force intensity but you're noticing so much more of like the complexities and the nuances on how everything fits together and I feel like in that you might also receive a lot of messages about how you're overcomplicating things. Don't overcomplicate it, Leo. It's easy. It's simple. It's like all of like the manifestation coaches that are like, just do your affirmations and raise your vibe. And you're like, do you even understand like the quantum mechanics, like the complexities of like how something even grows and what the dying process, the decom the decomposing process even looks like, right? It's like it kind of it's like philosophically it kind of pisses you off. And I think that I feel you on that. Like, I totally get it. But again, it's part of this juxtaposition that you and other people could be looking at the same exact point, but you're seeing two totally different things. That your experience may look a lot like this, but right next to it, energetically, this is happening. People may see you as being very bright and kind of in this really good place and constantly coming to you for advice or resources or sustenance. Meanwhile, they don't know that like you're kind of stuck in this desert and they don't realize how upset you are because they're not seeing your true face. It's and, and so this is the point where I'm reading where I'm like, this is fucking crazy. Like, I would be tired too. I would be exhausted as well. We have this plant, we have this growth card coming up next, which I think is really just emphasizing the point that I made before, that a lot of different things can happen in the same exact place. That winter can land in the same place that spring can. If you, there's almost something like if you stand here long enough, it's like a tree, right? It's like if you stand here long enough, you'll kind of make your way through all of the seasons sort of eventually kind of back to this death and regeneration type of, of process that we're talking about here. Now, the, the main question that comes to my mind when we hit this point of the reading is how? Like, how do I encourage this wheel to spin? How do I encourage the seasons to happen? I understand how complex this process is. And maybe I'm, I feel like I'm telling you, and maybe I am making it overcomplicated, but this is sort of who I am. So like, how do I, how do I kind of find the middle ground in there? And you have this cat and this strategy card. You have a cat and a fox 
intuition and strategy. And so it feels like there is sort of this big burst of energy. And maybe it's coming from sitting in this stillness for so long and kind of having your ears perked up that you're actually able to like pull in this message. Maybe you're going into a trance or doing some type of meditation. That something seems to be coming in here about how you kind of cut through this energy. That your intuition is your superpower in a way, which I think might have been Virgo's monthly reading name. But you are able to kind of burst through it. And going back to this Anubis energy, these energies are kind of dark, right? And we were talking about the quality of the soil. So this might be a process for you, Leo, that is not done most effectively through your lights or through the expression of your energy, but instead through the consolidation of your energy and um, applying the skills of the shadow instead. Does that make but sacred ibis comes up next and it says learning here. And again, there is all of this cutting through. There is sort of this opening that's coming up. And with this learning, it feels like a different technique that wants to come in for you. You have the beaver work coming up next. And this feels like almost like some esoteric knowledge that's being downloaded or given to you or channeled through in this reading, that when you open up these double doors, this is sort of what you see on the other side. And it is the complexities of the ecosystem all working together. Like we see the snowy mountains right here. We see the spring fields. We see sort of these planetary systems. And beavers are kind of these masters of flow because they create dams. So they can stop water flow and they can create water flow where previously there wasn't any. And you have this dolphin card coming up next. So the strategy seems to be around how you can master flow and energy manipulation. So this is the way it's coming through. And this probably is the most important part of this reading if you actually are looking for a solution. So as I said before, that you can stand in the same place and see several different things and changes and seasons happen in the same exact place. As we know, time is not linear and energy never dies. So Leo, if you are able in your mind to go back to the time or go back to the season when you felt like you were in this energy. For example, maybe it was last spring. If you in your mind can go back and connect to the energies that you were tapped into last spring. And if you were able to kind of consolidate them, breathe them in, hold on to the feeling of them then you, much like how a beaver creates a dam, can redirect them to the season that you're in. So instead of waiting for an external energy to come and meet you and thaw out whatever is going on around you, you instead can pull from the energies that you were already sitting in and just redirect them to your new season. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. You have dark matter and you have groundedness, gravity coming up next. And for me, this looks like you sort of reaching into the void or reaching into the dark hole. As I said, energy never dies, but we forget that it exists still because it kind of goes back behind the scenes because it's not in our present reality and it's not one of our future concerns. We're waiting for a new energy to come in. But death and rebirth, again, it's just like compost. We can take the leftovers from the other scenes seasons that we were in and we can move them and compost them now to add to the quality of the soil and so it feels like you have to reach into this void energy reclaim or attach connect back to that energy of when things were going better for you effectively and then this right here you see how there's all these butterflies there's all these things and then it feels like you kind of have to connect it into the grid that you're in so some of this also has to do with Again, uh, energy, manipulation, alchemy, but also grid work. It's like connecting it to the threads that are already present in your life right now. Connecting it to the grid that you're in. Connecting it to your consciousness, your body that you're in. Connecting it to the work that you're doing right now. There's a connection. You can't just take it and just throw it. It's like hanging streamers. You actually have to pin them up on the wall. But if you are able to do that with this ground and this gravity, you'll be able to pull it into your physical reality. And the last two cards you have are completion west, which is this puzzle piece going into the brain. It's sort of this like 
<laughs> do you see me? I'm just like, ah, oh, like, that does make sense. Like, I didn't know that I could do that. I didn't know that I could sort of borrow from energy that I've already experienced it, connect it to my life now, connect it to my consciousness and my grids, and then ground it into my reality. I'm always integrating all of this stuff outside of me that is always pissing me off. I didn't realize I could connect to an energy that was beneficial to me at one point and connect it in. It's like this missing puzzle piece. And then the last card you have is bravery, ocean. So it does feel like there is kind of this element of risk here, right? Which also goes into the wheel of fortune just because you don't know if it'll work, right? And I can't guarantee that this will work, but this seems to be the technique that's coming in for you as a solution. So there is an element of sort of a gamble here, like let's experiment. We've tried everything else, but like we haven't tried this yet. So maybe it will work. But what I love about it is at the end, you're no longer so far away from the earth trying to understand like the secret sauce or again, the, the formula on how to balance the ecosystems. You're actually like, you're right on top of it. So there is sort of no longer this juxtaposition between the energy that you know you can embody, um, the way you know things can go for you and how they actually are. There isn't a difference between the way people are seeing you and how you're seeing yourself. Um, it, it, that, that gap gets bridged. It comes together. And if you actually notice, there's this new life sprouting from this earth, like every time you take this step. So you end up feeling much more in control. You're able to shift energy much more successfully and you are actually like in physical contact with the things that you want as opposed to it just being an energy or an idea in your mind so leo this is this is what i have i really really hope that this was helpful for you i really hope this technique works for you because it's your birthday season and i want you to have a big win and at the very least I, if this is your story, I hope that this reading allowed you to feel seen and supported in the process of this because I recognize how challenging this has been for you. I am going to go do an extended reading. If you're interested in your extended reading or your monthly reading for August, those links are going to be in the description box. My books for August are open right now. I am shifting some of my sessions, right? So you may see some shifting happening in the next couple days. But anything else you'll need from me will be down below, especially the Patreon. I always encourage you guys to check out the Patreon because we have all of the extendeds, the monthlies, and the mystery school, which is really great. But if this is where I leave you, I love you. I appreciate you. Keep going. It's going to get better. I'll see you next time.